Hi, my name's Kieran and I'm the lead tutor on the FY185 Practical and Academic Skills in Science module. Uh, you might not have me for your sessions, I'm just the person who sort of oversees the whole thing, but you'll probably have some subject tutors um, and subject specialists, depending on what sciences you study. I'm just going to take you through the course so you've got an idea of how the assessment works and how the structure of it actually functions. It's not a horribly complicated module, but it does vary from student to student depending on what you study. So you and a friend on the same module could study completely different subjects and completely different sessions, even though it's in the same module. And you'll also be doing completely different assessments. So you do need to make sure that you know how this module is going to work for you. So what is this module? It's one that's related to skills, um, particularly practical skills, more than theory. Although you might still learn the theory of certain experiments within the module itself. You'll be doing a little bit of lab work and you'll also be learning a lot of experimental planning and analysis skills that go around that practical work. Here's just a little bit, uh, a few members of our team. Uh, you might end up actually with some slightly different people. We've also got Lucy and Anka who might be involved in some of the sessions on top of this. But Sam um, is involved in the chemistry, as would Lucy be. Uh, Laura, Nakash and Anka would be the life sciences tutors. Uh, if you're doing GG, you'll see a, a lot more of Pauline. And if you're doing physics, you'll see me and Zach. Right, as I've said... This is not a complicated module, but it's different for everybody and it depends on exactly what you're studying. So make sure you know how this should look to you. It really is up to you to make sure that you're studying the right stuff and you know what assessments you've got to hand in and when. This isn't just a case of um, turn up and do what everybody else is doing. It is different for every student. So a typical week in pass would be checking your timetable to make sure that you know what you've got coming in that week. Making sure that you've checked over the KLE materials. There's a lot of materials on the KLE to support this module. And that might involve things like watching a video or reading some tasks. Um, maybe writing a procedure in preparation for an experiment that you know you're going to be doing. You'd also be turning up for a tutorial in either one or both of your science subjects if you're studying two sciences. So this is life sciences, GGE, uh, physics or chemistry. We don't, for example, have an astrophysics um, part to pass. If you're doing astrophysics, you'll be doing the physics pass. Um, computer science doesn't count as a science for this, so that's not part of this. Psychology also isn't part of this. Um, so it really is just if you're doing foundations of life sciences, chemistry, um, physics and GGE, then you'll do the equivalent units as part of the pass module. So therefore, when you know what it is you've got to attend, make sure you turn up to all the tutorials. You'll have one every week in one or both of your subjects if you're doing two sciences. Make sure that you look forward to whatever work you've got to do next week and that you're prepared for that as well. There's a lot of work to do in PASS, but it is all skills and you only really get good at skills by doing. So you've got to be prepared to keep up with the work. Again, if you've got two science subjects, you will have sessions for both of those every week. But you might also have some additional labs that are extra on your timetable later on. In life sciences that will happen in the second half of the semester and in chemistry it will happen twice. You'll have a one-off additional three-hour lab. You have to make sure you know when those are coming. They are on your timetable. So don't miss them because you won't be able to repeat them if you do. So the past module covers four key subjects. Um, geography, geology and environmental science which is GGE, chemistry, life sciences and physics. It doesn't matter what um, your degree pathway, or let's say your degree title is, it might be forensic science, it might be um, astrophysics and maths, but these are the four key sciences that you fall under. So you will study one of these, and it's very easy to know which ones you'll be studying, because you've just got to look at your timetable. If you're studying foundations of chemistry, GG, life sciences or physics, then you'll study pass in those same subjects, or subject, if there's just one science that you're doing. Those of you that are doing two different sciences will only need to study the core material in both of those subjects. So, for example, chemistry core material and life sciences core material. And that will be the subject of most of your tutorials, as well as a lot of the materials that are online. For those of you that are only doing one science, that might be you're doing science and maths, it might be you're doing science and computer science, it might be that you're just doing single honours in your science subject. There is additional material for you to study as part of your single science subject. So everybody essentially studies two units within PASS. 
that might be two units of the same subject or the core units in two different subjects. So just to make it really, really clear, let's say you're studying foundations in chemistry, you'll study core chemistry. Foundations in GGE, you'll study core GGE. Foundations in life sciences, you'll study core life sciences. Foundations in physics, you'll study core physics. If you're only doing one of those above at foundations, then you'll also do the additional material in that subject. If that doesn't make sense or you're not sure what you're meant to be studying, ask your tutor or get in touch with me and we'll clarify it. When you do get in touch with us, though, just let us know what you are actually studying. Um, it's very difficult if you get a student who emails and says, what should I be studying? Um, I need to know a little bit more about you. So let us know what your other modules are uh, and what your question is, and we'll help you out if we can. Either that or you can contact Foundation Year Admin, and they'll only be too happy to help you as well. So in short, make sure you are studying two units of work in the past module either two core subjects or a core and an additional. If you're not studying two units of work in parallel, you're missing out on something and that's going to cause problems when it comes to assessments. Okay, so in week one, you'll be studying um, just the induction materials. Now that does mean which is including this week, essentially, you might need to be checking the KLA to see if there are any materials that you need to um, be following. Yeah. Um, so from weeks 2 to 12, you'll then have weekly live sessions in one or both of your subjects. Uh, if you're doing physics or GG, those sessions are two hours long and will usually be, um, in, for physics certainly, in a lab, and for GG, you might be in different locations, so you'll need to follow that through from your tutor, Pauline. If it's life sciences and chemistry, the sessions for those are only one hour long because they're not set in a lab, but you will have additional practical sessions built into your timetable. So overall, it evens out, but you can see why two different students might be studying in two very different ways. Make sure you know how it applies to you. So an overview of the assessment for the past module. There are essentially two sides to the assessment. Um, about two thirds of the way through, three quarters of the way through you'll be handing in a portfolio and at the end you'll be handing in a lab report or a report on a scientific investigation. The portfolio is 50% of the total and that's also split into two sections. There is a set of professionalism and health and safety questions and there is a lab diary um, or lab sheets and a reflection. For the portfolio, the 25% professionalism and health and safety questions you'll find on your um, KLE uh, in the module. So you'll find them in the assessments um, section. Again, there are eight different assessments. You are not expected to, to do them all. You are meant to do two. You only have to do the core and the additional in your subject. Or if you're doing two sciences, you do core in both. Again, effectively, everybody should do 20 questions in total. They should do two tests. Don't do more than two tests. If you end up doing more than two tests, you... Um, you won't have the greatest scores counted and it might end up actually causing problems with your assessment. So do make sure you do the correct two uh, tests for you. If you're not sure which ones you should be doing, again, ask your subject tutor. If you're doing two sciences, you should be doing one test in each science. If you're only doing one science, you should be doing the core and additional tests in that science. If you're doing single honours physics, for example, please don't start answering questions about GG. It won't help you. The other part of the portfolio um, very slightly with the subject, but the, the idea is it will be something like a lab diary or some lab sheets or pro formas, um, and it will always include a reflective piece of work. Don't ignore the reflective piece of work. It is worth a chunk of marks for the assessment. OK, you'll only complete one lab diary, lab pro forma or lab sheets, and it'll be based on experiment one. This is the experiment you do at the beginning of the course. For those people who are doing two science subjects, you will, of course, do an experiment one in each of those subjects. But you will only submit one of those experiments for assessment. There'll be an opportunity for you to do some peer or self-assessment to get some feedback on the other one that isn't submitted. But of course, you're still expected to complete both experiments because you're going on to do a degree in both subjects. You will need to learn all of those skills. But again, you can only submit one of those for an assessment. I'll show you in a moment how to know which one you've got to submit. But you must submit the correct 
assessment. If you submit the wrong one, it may not get marked. Details of exactly what this practical um, and the related assessment and write-up would be will be given to you by your subject tutors. And it does vary from different subjects. After doing the lab diary or pro forma or lab sheets and after completing experiment one, as part of just that assessment, you will be asked to write a reflection. Again, this is only something you've got to do in that one subject, although there's never any harm in doing a reflection at any point based on any one of the activities you've undertaken. You'll complete the reflection and you will add that on to your lab diary or pro forma and you'll submit it all as one single document. Later in the course, and at the end of the, of the semester, you'll be submitting a lab report. This will be based on the second experiment that you will do in one of your subjects. Again, if you're doing two sciences, you will do two experiment twos, one in each subject. And again, you will only submit one of those for assessment. And as before, there will be an opportunity for you to do a little self or peer assessment and get some feedback on your unsubmitted assessment. So again, you have to engage with both of them. You only need one for the assessment but you'll be losing out on an awful lot of skills, which you will be expected to have when you move into next year. So you have to fully engage with both of these, and you would, for example, be writing two lab reports, uh, but again, only one of those would be submitted for assessment. For those of you that are only doing one subject, this is a lot easier, of course. You will just do an experiment one and an experiment two, both in the same subject, and your assessments for both the lab diary and the um, lab report would be based on just those experiments. So that's a lot more straightforward if you're only studying the one science. So how do we know which subjects to submit for? Well, there's a handy little table, which is also available on the KLE, so you don't need to worry about writing this down now. But I would very seriously have a wall planner with all of your dates, all of your deadlines. Get it on your wall. I know you might have them in your phone, but get it on the wall so you can see it. And you can see the dates coming. And one of the things, when you've got all your assessments and information written down in one place, make sure you make a note of this information. So, for example, if you're studying chemistry, uh, single science, you obviously just submit chemistry one and chemistry two. But if you were doing chemistry and life sciences, you'd submit life sciences one for the lab diary and chemistry two for the lab report. Again, if you're not sure about this at any point, just ask. We would much rather you ask than leave it too late and then not know which one to submit and end up missing a deadline. Deadlines are something that are beyond our control. Um, you can put in for an extenuating circumstances and get extensions, um, but granting those or not granting those is beyond your tutor's control. So it's no good turning up to your tutor and saying, could I just have an extra couple of days? I wasn't sure what I was doing about this. It will already be too late. And provided it's handed in within a week of the deadline, your mark will be capped at 40%. Any later than that, it won't get a score at all. So make sure that you know when these deadlines are and that you are prepared for what assessments you need to submit well in advance of the deadline. Don't leave anything to the last minute. Okay, just another example. For instance, single science GGE, um, you submit GGE1. And GG2. So the same for any single scientist. That doesn't necessarily mean single honours, but if you were doing, for example, physics and maths, then you'd just do the physics assessments and the physics experiments. Nice and easy. But again, ask if you're not sure. Okay, what if you have a lab session that you really needed to attend but you miss? Can you have it rerun for you? I'm afraid, of course, not really. They're lab sessions with kit and equipment and they are in a timed lab. So we are not able to rerun any of the lab sessions. So the best thing you can do is make sure that you turn up for every single one of the sessions, whether they're an hour long tutorial in life sciences, a three hour lab in chemistry, or one of your two hour weekly lab sessions in physics or GGE. However, people do get ill and things do go wrong. So don't panic if you do miss a lab session. There are alternatives, um, virtual experiments or videos that you can watch where you'll be able to collect the data and you'll still be able to complete the full assessment. Some of the experiments are actually run at home anyway. For example, the first life sciences experiment is something you do yourself. So there isn't really a lab session for that that you could miss. The best advice I can give you is to try and make sure that you are present in the lab session because that's going to give you the best experience and the best opportunity to ask for help. 
But if you do miss it and it's completely unavoidable, don't worry, it doesn't put you at a disadvantage for the assessment. There's a lot going on in PASS and it will take some organising. So, first thing is, make sure that you've got the right subjects for PASS in your timetable. By now you should understand which subjects should be showing up. On your timetable it should tell you which of your PASS subjects are which, whether it's physics, chemistry or whatever. If you're doing sustainability, there isn't a PASS session for that. You are classed as doing a single science. Make sure you know when your timetable sessions are and that you know when the additional labs are coming. Don't ask a friend when theirs are. Theirs might be at a different time. Check that you know in advance of any of the sessions what it is you've got to do and leave time to do it. It might be a case of analysing some data before you come to the next tutorial. It might be a case of writing a procedure. It might just be a case of reading some experimental instructions. Make sure that you're very clear about which of the subjects you are submitting for which assessment. If you're not sure, have a look at that table, which is also available on the KLE, and ask your tutor. Don't leave the independent learning tasks. If there's something you have to do, do it when you're given it each week. The students who don't make it through pass as a module are the ones who leave everything to the last minute with the reason that they will catch up eventually, they'll get it all, or it's better if they do it at the end. Those are the students who do not make it through this module. Even though you're in week one, or you might be listening to this in week two, but hopefully very early on, you'll be aware that you've got some health and safety quizzes. This is part of the portfolio. The information for these, um, for some subjects, is already available. Certainly for physics, it's something you're expected to study in week zero. Physics ones are not difficult, however. Health and safety in physics is a lot less... Um, dangerous let's say than in something like chemistry but you still have to study the health and safety materials in other subjects it will become a task that you'll do a little bit later on but if the materials are there for self-study get the health and safety quiz questions done as soon as you can that's 25 percent of your assessment and you can have it out of the way by the end of week one if you start the um if you start with your uh, uh, an idea of organization as soon as you're given lab sheets or lab reports to write for your second, um, for first and second experiment assessments, get started on those as quickly as you can. If you've never done anything like that before, and the chances are you haven't, it will take longer than you think. Do not leave it to the last minute. So what should you be doing in week zero? Well, watch this presentation, so well done. Um, make sure you can find your subject materials on the KLE. You'll see all of the materials on the KLE for all four subjects. You are not expected to study all four. If you're doing physics and maths, you don't have to look at the GG materials. Just find your materials and make sure you know where to find the week-on-week -week, um, activities and where you can find out what's going on and what you've got to do. Find out what you're doing for your subjects. Look ahead to the first session, which would be in week two. Make sure you're prepared for it. See if there's anything you need to do in advance. And write down what assessments you will be doing for your combination of subjects. For now, that is about it. Um, so basically, turn up to the sessions. That's the best bit of advice I can give you. Come, ask questions, get involved, do stuff. The past module is set up so that a lot of the materials are there online and some students feel like, oh, I don't need to turn up to tutorials because everything I need is there. Again, the failure rate on students who don't attend their sessions is incredibly high because although they read it through and it sort of makes sense to them they don't really get a chance to ask the questions they don't sort out any of the problems and they think they're doing okay because they don't ever meet anybody else who can tell them that they need to improve on certain aspects and how to do better or how to do the things that are there causing them, um, that are causing them trouble so don't let problems fester all right come along to the sessions ask us questions there are no stupid questions in this module all right everybody's learning everybody's relatively new at some aspect of this there's always somebody who's done bits of it before don't let them put you off <laughs> if you're not sure how to do something something like calculating a mean something like working out a standard deviation how to know the difference between an independent and dependent variable so you can plot a graph what you've got to do to get that straight line equation whatever your question is come along to the tutorials and they will be answered so talk to us, keep in touch, um, and your main port of call for any problems is coming to the tutorials every week and following the activities that you've been given. Certainly in physics, all of our activities are based around the idea of completing um, an experiment, everything from procedure to doing the experiment itself, collecting and analysing the data, writing a lab diary, and then writing a lab report. 
So if you're coming to the sessions, we're telling you literally what you need to do for your assessments. So make sure that you're there. Good luck with the module. It's an incredibly vital module for you to learn because it teaches you everything you're going to need to know practically going forwards, as well as some specifics about some particular experiments. So work hard on it, keep up with it, don't let the problems fester, and we look forward to working with you.